This video will describe how to install, configure, and deploy DeepFreeze Enterprise in your Windows computing environment. Once you've downloaded and extracted the DeepFreeze software from Pharonix, run the DFENT executable file in the root of that extracted folder. Click Next through the various screens and provide your license key or check the Use Evaluation option. This will begin the installation process for the DeepFreeze Enterprise console. And the next step in the install process is to specify what we call a customization code. A customization code provides a secure encrypted channel between our DeepFreeze Enterprise console and our DeepFreeze Enterprise workstations. It's important once you specify your customization code that you record it and store it somewhere secure where it can be retrieved at a later date if necessary. Our DeepFreeze Enterprise console will open up and you'll notice initially that I have no workstations appearing in the main portion of the console. In order to have workstations appear, we need to first create a DeepFreeze Enterprise workstation installation file and install that file on the workstations that we want to protect with DeepFreeze. In order to do that, on the left side of the screen, we'll expand Available Configurations, right-click on DeepFreeze, and click Add Configuration. This interface allows us to pre-configure all of our desired settings directly inside of a, uh, a workstation install file. The very first tab is passwords, and we want to ensure that we set, at the very least, a workstation password. This workstation password will provide access to freeze and thaw deep freeze while working directly with the workstation itself. The next tab over, uh, provides us the ability to specify which drives on a system we want to protect with DeepFreeze. By default, we select all physically attached disks. It's important to note that DeepFreeze does not provide the ability to freeze or protect network shares or map drives. Deselect all of the drives and select just the drives you want to protect with DeepFreeze, in this case the C drive. On the right side of the Drives tab, we provide the ability to create what we call thaw spaces. What a thaw space is, is a virtual partition that's hosted on that frozen C drive that provides the ability or provides a location for data to be saved and retained. This data is not impacted by deep freeze, and thaw spaces generally are real handy to provide an area for users who may need to save data locally, while still providing that protection of the critical areas of the operating system in the C drive with deep freeze. The next tab over is our Workstation Tasks tab. On the Workstation Task tab, we have the ability to create a number of different types of tasks, all geared towards simplifying the process of managing a deep freeze environment. The very first task is Windows Update. What the Windows Update task provides is the ability to automate the process of running Windows updates on your deep freeze protected computers. Select the day or days that you want to run your Windows updates, the time that you want them to start, and deep freeze will automatically manage and monitor the Windows Update log files and restart that system back into a frozen state when that Windows Update process has been completed. We'll click on OK and we'll be taken to the Windows Update tab where we can specify additional options related to how we want Windows Updates to occur. Down towards the bottom we can specify where we want to retrieve Windows Updates from. The public Windows Update website or if you have an internal WSUS server you can point deep freeze to the location of that server as well as the target ID that you may use for those updates. Towards the top, we provide a couple of options related to whether or not we want to cache Windows updates. What exactly does this mean? Well, by default we do not cache Windows updates. And all that means is that when the Windows update task triggers, the very first thing the computers do is go to the location specified towards the bottom of the screen to retrieve those Windows updates. The Cache Windows Updates option carves out a 5 gigabyte thaw space on your deep freeze protected computers. And in that 5 gigabyte thaw space, we will actually retrieve Windows updates as they become available and store them there. The difference being that when the Windows Update task triggers on a system that has the Cache Windows Updates option selected, instead of first having to retrieve Windows updates, we simply execute the installation process from that locally cached drive. We also provide a couple of other maintenance related tasks, one being a thawed period and one being a batch file. 
The thawed period task simply allows you to define a period of time during which deep freeze computers will automatically be placed into a thawed state. At the end of that time, systems will restart themselves back into a frozen state. We also provide the ability to automate a schedule during which systems will be restarted or shut down. And in addition, we provide an idle time timer. The idle time timer is very handy in a multi-user or public access environment where multiple users use the system throughout a period of time. The idle time timer allows you to configure a restart based on a period of inactivity. This allows systems to be restarted when users are not using them, providing a fresh, clean environment for the next user who may need to use that system. Finally, we'll move to the Advanced Options tab. On the Advanced Options tab, we want to point the deep freeze computers to the location of the management console. This will provide us the ability to manage our deep freeze environment directly from our console. Specify the IP address or the workstation uh, name or the uh, computer name of the console. And finally, click on OK to save the configuration. Enter the name and click on OK. We've now successfully configured our deep freeze uh, package. Now in order to install this deep freeze configuration onto a computer, right click on the configuration we've just created, select export as and click Workstation Installer. This will create an EXE file which we can then take to our computers that we want to protect with Deep Freeze, install it on those systems, they will then report into our management console. If you'd prefer to work with MSI files, we also include a utility in our downloaded package that uh, allows you to convert that exported EXE file into an MSI file. As you can see, my deep freeze computer now has, is reporting into the management console. And simply by selecting that computer and right clicking on it, you can see the functionality that we provide in terms of management capabilities from the deep freeze enterprise console. All of the options in the right click menu correlate to the options across the toolbar as well. We can do things such as restart and shut down computers, initiate a wake on LAN uh, command, we can restart systems into a thawed state, thawed with the keyboard and mouse locked to prevent users from manipulating the system while it's unprotected. We can also then restart systems back into a frozen state. We can broadcast messages out to the computers, lock and unlock the keyboard and mouse. We can update the configuration on a deep freeze computer by se selecting from a list of available configurations. We can update just the workstation tasks we can also initiate a Windows Update command, and this will pull all of the settings that we defined while we were creating that installer package. We can end an active workstation task. We can remotely execute an application that's installed on the target computer. We can also push and install an application on a target computer. So if you wanted to deploy software or install software, this is the way we would do that directly from the Deep Freeze console. If you've created a thaw space and that thaw space has accumulated data over a period of time and you need to format it, we can also format thaw spaces directly from the Deep Freeze Enterprise Console. We can show a log of activity that's taken place. We can remove computers from groups or tasks if we've created groups and tasks. Uh, we can remove computers from history. We can also take advantage of custom actions that can be created. We can install software on a computer that has the Deep Freeze Seed installed on it. We can update or upgrade the Deep Freeze software if a new version becomes available. We can also uninstall uh, the Deep Freeze software. Now, in order to uninstall the software, computers need to be in a thawed state. We can export the uh, uh, list of computers that are reporting into the console. We can copy details about the computer as well. On the left side of the console, we can create groups, uh, we can create static groups, we can also create groups that dynamically filter computers into them based on various attributes and you can see the uh, options that are available here in the workstation column or in the, the leftmost uh, column here. In addition, we can schedule a number of different types of tasks. Now these tasks are scheduled and are executed from the console themselves. 
Um, they would not relate in any way to any sort of workstation tasks that have been configured uh, during the process of creating that installer package. And we can view all of our available configurations, create additional configurations, etc. I hope this video has been helpful. Again, this is designed to uh, ensure you are aware of how to install the DeepFreeze Enterprise Console, configure the installation file to install DeepFreeze on your computers, and ultimately uh, designed to give you an overview of the functionality available through the Enterprise Console in terms of managing and administering those DeepFreeze computers.